Hello and welcome to the Growing Green Podcast. Your host, Jeremiah Jennings, is the owner of Growing Green Landscapes in Birmingham, Alabama, and has a passion for growing the entrepreneurship community for those who are young in business. Being a business owner isn't easy, especially in the early years, and that's why in this show we dive into a wide range of topics covering all the challenges small business owners deal with. Even if your company is generating a million dollars or more, the stories from our great guest and Jeremiah's own firsthand experiences will propel your business forward. And now, here's your host, Jeremiah Jennings. What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in for to another episode of today here on the Growing Green Podcast. This is your host, Jeremiah Jennings, and I'm super excited to come to you today with another fresh new episode for you. And we have none other than Sam Rankin with Etch Outdoor on the show today. Another great guest interview. I'm excited for these. I love doing guest interviews. Uh, we had vacation, and and then I did a couple solo shows. And so this is our first guest interview we've had, um, just like just a, a true guest interview in a while. Uh, and so I'm excited to do that. I, uh, I've been, we've been trying to work on this for like six months. I've been beating Sam's door down trying to get him on. And so I finally snagged him for an afternoon, and uh, we said, let's do it. So I'm, I'm excited to have you here today, buddy. Yeah, good, uh, good to be here. And yeah, I apologize. You know, you're busy, I'm busy, and uh, it's makes it challenging. It, but, but uh, you know, it's part of part of growing a business. It ain't that, always easy. <laughs> that's right. There's you will never, hear, nobody will ever hear me complain. Uh, like I'll never complain or get on you about mission meetings or having to reschedule. Like the amount of times I've had to do that crap, and, and I'm not even doing anything to your level yet. So I, I totally understand it, and that's part of. It's part of I know building a building, all that's going going uh, going on right now. So that's all, all adds to the pressure and the schedule and, and all that stuff. So you you will never hear anything negative from me about that. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, I I mean I was late today. It's I was finishing a one on one. I'm like, all right, I got to stand up because I got to get going. Yeah, to, to get to this, and my I live and die by my calendar. I don't know about you, but yeah, uh, you get behind for an eight a.m. and it's like my whole day is just. Yep. I know I'm going to run behind all day, so it's it's tough. But no, I'm I'm uh, I'm absolutely excited to be here. It's it's a privilege, you know, to to get in front of a new audience, to to, to have new conversations, and and you know, be able to bounce and, and learn from you. Um, I don't I don't always I don't ever look at these as one sided conversations. So they're exciting for me too because there's a lot of a lot of really smart people out there. I'm probably the least smart of most of them. I just somehow have done it. So. Hey man, you get around the oh, right yeah. people. I mean, you probably have the same philosophy when you were getting started. You got around people that were smarter than you, further along than you, and uh, see where it takes you. So, still uh, do, still do. Yeah, exactly. You you never really outgrow that. So I'm in that right now. Like get around people that are doing bigger, better than me, and uh, we'll see where it takes us. So, well, man, yeah. uh, people people have probably heard of of you. They probably live under a rock if they haven't. You've been kind of blowing up, just getting. The, the business growth going, uh, get, getting uh, active on social as well. Everybody knows you as probably the tight pants guy. I mean, uh, but it, you might as well just you might as well take it and run with it, dude. Just accept it. Uh, I'm I, I'm I for it. it though. I like it. So uh, own it and own it All and right. go with it. Well, I mean, I'm six seven. Um, you know, they don't make many pants long enough for me to begin with, and and I I've always been a huge Lululemon guy. Love yeah. them. I think they're the most comfortable pair of pants ever. You play golf with them. I wear them around the house because I think they're more comfortable than sweatpants. I wear them to work every day. Yeah. Dude, they're good. So uh, that has just slowly, that and a mustache have just slowly kind of become my brand. And now, <laughs> you know, I'm in too deep and I, I can't backtrack anymore. So it's just, I own it. And, and that's right. That's who I am. That's who yeah. I am. There's, there's no way around it. Are you going to rock the mustache all the way through the wedding? Absolutely. I, uh, I told my fiance, I was like, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll shave it. And she's like, no, like that's you. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, and, and you know, at first it started in November and, and yeah. I just didn't get rid of it. And it's like, well, all right, we keep her trimmed up a little bit better now, but, uh, you know, that's just slowly becoming the brand and it's like dads and goatees, you know, that like you just gotta have yeah. that kind of brand. And there we are. So, hey, if you got, if you got yeah. the, you got the the better half's approval there then you stick it out and go with it so absolutely i'm absolutely. with you though those yeah. those those lulu pants those style of pants man i i don't know how guys wear jeans every day like guys will work in jeans it is the mo i don't care if you're working or not like i i despise wearing jeans i will wear khakis all day long over a pair of jeans i i also like you know i 
I, I'm not in the field ever. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll help here and there with snow removal and I'll, I'll show up, you know, when we start at midnight, I'll be out for a couple hours just to make sure guys know that I'm a part of it and, and I'm with them, but I don't, I don't ever touch the field. Like I, I, I just, I don't, um, you know, my, my area of influence is, is usually inside the four walls of the office and, and I'm kind of more directing traffic now. So I don't have the need for, for pants. I also like, you know, I, I'm wearing a golf shirt today, but I, I wear a dress shirt probably three, four days a week. I, I expect yep. that I need to carry myself at a higher standard. You know, I all year last year, I probably wore a hat two or three days. Like I, I just, I don't do yeah. it. I, I think it's, you know, as a leader, I think it's part of my responsibility to get up to do my hair, you know, to have my cup of coffee before I get to the office and, and, you know, be full of energy when I walk in. I, I, I just think it's, you have to carry yourself to the place you want to be maybe even do a little bit more of, of, you know, that future self than, than current. So it's part of that kind of, I, I don't want to say error about myself, but I, I just, I expect a lot out of myself and, and, you know, our team has come to expect that out of me too, um, fairly. So. That, that line right there is, is huge. Carry yourself to where you want to be. I mean, that's, I always look at it like, and, and I, I'm preaching to the choir. I'm just sitting here wearing a hat. We've been out, putting a dump show together all day, putting walls on yep. and stuff. But the, I always love going to conferences in our industry. Cause like you see, you can tell you're at a green industry conference when every guy in there has a hat on like everyone in there. And I literally, the last thing I was at, uh, was at an element event in Nashville and there was probably 50, 60 people in there. I would say probably 25 to 30% had hats on. So there was actually quite a few that didn't, but I will tell you this, the demographic of that audience was guys million plus companies um, for the most part. And it made me think those, that my wheels actually started turning about this. I woke up that morning was like, should I wear a hat today or should I not? I think one day I wore a hat one day I didn't, but I was thinking to myself, like when you go, when you're reaching that sales level that you're going to meet with high end clients, things like that, like you do have to present yourself in a different way than you do just your contractor out in the field type like go meet with the homeowner. Yeah. Um, yeah. and that, that is, there's actual truth to that. I mean, how is that? Have you seen that? Like, as you've grown your company, I mean, and also just spin this into, tell us a little bit about what you got going on at etch. Um, but I think yeah. there's actually true validity to this conversation. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I, I see, you know, I, I'm involved in a number of uh, I'm peer groups and, and I'm in, you know, I go to the NALP showcases and I, I go to a lot of those events and, you know, you run into a lot of the same people and, and you, you know, you always try to bump shoulders with those that are, that are doing what you want to be doing. And, you know, you go out to dinner with them and they're all wearing jackets and you just yeah. have a quarter zip on. It's like, mm. it, and there's just that little bit of difference. Now, it, no, it, it, it doesn't frankly matter how you dress, but I think it's actually about how you carry yourselves and, and, and how you, you know, how you project, are, are you respectable? Are you, you know, it, it's just the, the vibe, I guess it is yeah. probably the best word I can use to describe it. Um, and, you know, parlay that kind of into what we're doing at Etch is, is I'm trying to change. I'm trying to change the green industry um, and, and what small facet that I may be able to, it's just in our local market or, you know, on a greater regional level. Um, we're, we're trying to leave a lasting legacy of, of white glove service of high-end design build, or frankly, just design build experiences that, that are going to allow families to make memories in the backyard. Etch simply is to scribe. Um, our goal is, is to change, like I said, whatever small or large part of this industry we can, and, and whether it's in one market or many markets, um, our goal is, is to continue to grow. And that's the one thing that our team knows is constant is change. And, and, you know, it's, it's, it's truly a privilege to have a team that does want to, to do these things. You know, we had a, just to kind of throw out a backstory in a conversation, we do what we call level 10 meeting every single week. Um, that's every morning at 8 a.m. on Tuesdays. Had that today. Um, I showed up, I was actually late today. I had a, a engagement that started at 6.30 a.m., but when I got there at 8.30, they were already rocking and rolling like, you know, like they didn't need me, which usually goes better that way. But um, a few weeks ago, I laid out our 10-year vision. I, I said, here's where we're at. Here's where we're going to be at the end of this year. Here's where we're going to be in three years. And here's where we're going to be in 10 years. 
And, you know, I'll throw out that big scary number in front of you and your audiences. You know, I said, end of 2033, we're going to be at $31 million. And I just stopped and I waited. And you could hear a pin drop and everybody's like, holy shit. Sorry. I don't know if you can swear on your podcast. No, you're good. Yeah. Everybody just kind of had that holy crap look on their face. And, and I said, and respectfully, if that's not what you're after, the door is behind you guys. Just walk now. I won't hold it against you. And I waited and I waited and I said, all right, then let's get to work. And so our team knows that that's our mission. That's our goal is, is we have an excellent place to work. And if we grow, we're going to continue to provide additional high paying jobs for them to continue to excel, but also for somebody that comes in as just a, a crew member to grow into a crew leader, to a field leader, to, to production man, they are going to have room to grow, to improve their livelihood, to, to improve the lives of their family. Um, and, and to just frankly grow, um, together we'll grow as our tagline. And, and that's, you know, a lot of what we do is kind of that driving force. Mm, that's good, man. How long have y'all been in business? Five years. So we started May of 2018. We just hit our five year birthday this past May. So this will be, this is our sixth full year here. Um, we do, we'll do about 6 million, just over $6 million in revenue this year. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's all a credit to our team. I'm never going to, I do these podcasts, but man, like it's not me. It's so not, I'm, I'm good at organizing resources at putting yeah. together a vision um, and simply just acting every single day. Like that's what I think I'm really good at is, is kind of that intrinsic motivation. Like we're creating a new award called the GSD award, the get shit done award. It's literally a toilet seat. And that's the crown for whoever gets shit done. It's kind of the, the support staff employee of the month award, if you will. And it's, it's the level of action that it takes. It's, you know, you can have all these good ideas, but they're worth nothing if you don't actually put them into place. And so yeah. that's where I feel like I really excel. Um, and we've got team members that, that do a really good job of, you know, landscape operations, lawn operations, our, our controller is, is a financial wizard. She does fantastic. And, you know, having these people in these, in these roles that are experts at certain things, I, I kind of just pay attention to the score, the scorecard and, and help them where I can less of, well, it's gotta be me doing everything. Get out of your own way. That's, that's what it boils down to. If you can uh, walk yourself back five years and try to remember those early days, what were the first delegations you did? What were the first people you brought on board? Um, were you, were you, are you just naturally good at getting out of your own way? Uh, I think a lot of guys struggle with that. Okay. So you're not shaking your head. No, that's good. That's good. That means we can actually unpack this conversation a little further, um, uh, and, and give some real advice here because I am a huge believer that that is, that is the number one thing holding people back from growing a company is themselves. Absolutely. And I, and I preach to myself as well. Like we've been in business the exact same time. I started spring of 2018. Um, literally going into your six, the exact same scenario here. And we're at two totally different business levels. And so I would love to hear your take on what did you do? What changes did you make um, early on to help you grow and scale uh, this business? Yeah, you, you kind of alluded to it there, but Jeremiah, you are the problem and you are the solution. Yep. Just like I am the problem and I am the solution. Same way every single owner is, um, you know, First year, we're doing 52, we did 52,000 in sales uh, or in, in completed revenue. Um, it was just me and and one other part-time guy helping mow. We just mowed trim, blow, no ancillary services. I don't think we planted any plants or even trimmed any shrubs. It was literally just mow, trim, edge, go. All residential. Um, every single step from there on out. So I did get a little bit lucky on the landscape side. I hired a guy that he said, bit a patio. I'll just do it. And I'm like, all right, man. Like he had three years of experience. So I, I did get really That's cool. lucky on that hire. Uh, he calls his name. He, he currently runs all of our landscape construction. It's slated kind of to move into an operations manager role to, to actually control all of, all of our production side. But everything to me was a do it. Do you understand it? And then empower somebody else to take it and run with it. So first it was mowing. Um, a little bit on the landscape side, not a ton, but, um, but mowing and then fertilization weed control is the next one. So I was in the field for the better part of a year and a half doing fruit and weed control, grew that, found somebody to take that over and got out of the field myself. And so 
I think I speak for a lot of people and I still speak for myself on this. I would love to do nothing. Wouldn't we, I mean, wouldn't we all have to do nothing to get paid <laughs> yeah, for it? Of course. Yeah. The hardest part is not wanting to delegate and empower people. The hardest part is knowing how to do it. It's very simple. If you actually take a step back and boil it down, do it with them watching, explain it, watch them do it, let them make mistakes and teach them from their mistakes. And then, slowly and surely let them take over uh the rule of if somebody can do it 80 percent as well they ought to do it not you um i've learned that that my time is is best spent on kind of the big picture the sales items that's where my time is best spent and sometimes it even takes me reminding myself that hey you got to slow down you actually have to teach somebody um, I, I have a, a big problem i'm not very specific sometimes in what i'm asking for with deliverables and so we actually, in, in, in our culture, we train both ways. Like our team will actually train me on, Sam, here's what I need from you to give this back to you. Um, and so it's, it's all about training. Um, one of the big things, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip the script on you, Jeremiah. When you yeah. hire a guy, what's, the, what's his first day look like? Uh, for, so, well, uh, there, what is it going to look like or what has it looked like? There's two no, different things. No, what does it look like? today yeah today well today that's a good thing I, it's changed today so to, okay All right. to, today it looks like uh, we do a working interview for um two weeks so they're going to come right and, and check it out and we're going to because we're going to base pay off of that we're going to have a pace uh a pay range and so we're going to base mm -hmm. pay off of that we're going to see how they are for two weeks um and then we will reevaluate um after those two weeks and see where we go from there as far as Pay sale Good. goes. Uh, but first yeah. day, I mean, Good. yeah, first day is for me now, like this is stuff that I've learned is I delegate yeah. from the get go now. Um, whereas I did it Good from the, I did it from the, I did it from the beginning. Uh, this past year has taught me a lot. We had a son. Um, and so now we, like, I, I wanted to stay home with him a lot more. I just learned to delegate. We lost a few customers. Good for you. Nine, Congrats, 90, 90, awesome. 90 percent of the people stayed on board. Uh, so we just went with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Exactly. And so I'll even take you back four or five months ago, you know, later parts of, of last growing season. And, you know, we, we were, we were doing, you know, uh, quite a few million dollars, but, but we were still, Hey, you're hired. You start on Monday. Yeah. Monday would show up. We'd throw him a blue shirt. We'd throw him a hat, throw him safety glasses, earplugs and say, all right, you're going to ride with Matt today. Same. Yeah, this was yeah. like, huh? Yeah. What? What? Like, well, what do I do? Where do I stand? What? Yeah. What are our goals for this? And so that is one thing that we have absolutely hammered out and changed tenfold. And, and we made this change literally over the last two or three months. And it's something I'm incredibly proud of is we're continuing to invest in that culture of training. So like day one, come in, you get your blue shirts. You get your hat, you get your earplugs, you get all your safety gear. And then you go through our handbook with Amanda, who helps run all of our HR. Um, she also did your interview with her, so you know her well. But you're doing all your handbook stuff. You're reviewing all that. You're making sure all your forms are filled out legally, correctly. You have copies of you know your driver's license and, and all those government-regulated things. Um, and then you're, you're going to spend the afternoon doing some preliminary training with the production manager. And so the production manager is going to iron out the rest of it to make sure a guy's comfortable on a lawnmower, make sure he knows how to run a weed whacker and a, and a blower and, and an edger or any specific tools to that job could be different in construction, but he's going to do quote unquote, those things, those things that are, are taken for granted. I think by owners, cause it's like we could jump back on a mower all day and it's just like riding a bike, but they've never done this. And so it's, it's our opportunity to invest in them. Um, but even more so, I think than actually teaching them the skills or making sure their paperwork is, is on track is we want to show them that frankly, we care, yeah. you know, when you have an onboarding program and you're investing into somebody instead of just throwing them to the wolves, like every other company in their past has done, you're regarded higher you have, you know, buy-in from that employee because they say, wow, they care about me. So I'm by default going to care just a little bit more about them. 
and ultimately what you're doing is you're hopefully setting this up for an employee who's going to be here for a very long time because mm-hmm. there's going to always be that training that you know the, the spring kickoff where they might learn some new things or you know, your weekly tailgate talks where you're you're teaching them a safety at like we just have that branded in our culture now that that sometimes growing is not all about dollars and cents but it's it's actually about growing somebody else and, and that's where you know together we grow is is not all about dollars it's not all about the number of clients it's it's sometimes just flat out about people so that's that's important mm-hmm. um and that's a long way around of saying onboarding is hugely important yeah. you cannot just throw somebody out there and expect them to do great because they're not even if they're from a previous company and have previous experience all they're doing is bringing bad habits with them i guarantee it i promise you're, they're not going to do it how you want to do it. So just take the time, step back and explain it. It's very hard to do when you're small, but do it and you'll thank yourself later. Weird correlation here, but this is, we're in the middle of onboarding with uh, Element Software right now. And it's the same, it's the same principles. Like you come from a different software, you're going to bring your, your, your habits over from that software that that was not as advanced. So like Element's going to walk you through a like six week onboard program and they're going to invest into you. They're going to actually teach you how to do all the stuff. And because I have firsthand knowledge of this, like the last um, last year I was using a different software. I didn't invest the time into it um, and, and attend and go through the onboard process the way that I should. And so that onboard, like that led to me not completing the tasks the way they should have been done, which in turn led to me canceling the software. And it's like, yep. that's what's going to happen with an employee. Like if you don't do the onboard process, they don't, they don't get that training it's going to lead to them not doing the work you want them to do, the quality that you wanted at, and then you're going to end up parting ways. They're either going to quit or you're going to get mad and fire them. Um, absolutely. absolutely. I would say that's, and, a, that's a correlation there that is, is true. Absolutely. I don't know if you if you follow Mark Bradley on, on LinkedIn. I've, I've just run into yeah. him at a handful of events. and I mean, some of the stuff, even just training based on the items that he puts out, um, you know, mm-hmm. just simply like about knowing your numbers and about some of the, the costs of, of team members and that sort of stuff. Like, man, he's got some really smart stuff. He, he is fantastically smart and, and got some really good information out there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, getting, getting to be around Mark is, is an awesome opportunity and getting to learn from him and, and, uh, sit under his teaching is very, very valuable. I highly highly recommend anybody who has that opportunity to do it, uh, take him up on that. So that's, uh, that's kind of where we're at right now. That's, that's cool to hear that you've fixed your onboarding process, changed that, uh, around let's, uh, let's, I mean, let's kind of go down the same, the same track of people. Um, I think that is a huge focus for us this year is we're focusing on people. We're wanting to grow people. We want to grow our company. We actually have set our goal. We're going to, I would like to double this year, um, at least. Sure. And so, we have to, we have to have people though. Like we're going to, we have to bring on at least three, probably two to three more people to do that. Um, and so like, what is your, what is your take your opinion? Like what advice do you give to guys that are trying to bring new guys in? How do you one how you're attracting good, um, employees and two, like, once you get them in, you like through the onboard process, like skip all that entry level stuff. Once they're part of your company, like, how are you creating culture to make them want to stay and grow a long-term uh, place for them to work? Sure. Um, first, I mean, it's up to you, right? It, it's, I, you seem like a really smart guy that, that I've gotten to know here and, and I doubling. So some people sound outlandish, but to us, I mean, we've doubled or tripled every single year. That's the yeah. norm for us. This is gonna be the first year we don't, or I hope we don't. Um, hmm. But you know, it, it is, it is so to us um what gets measured gets managed and i've got a lot of these taglines that i use but they actually they just help me repeat the same message over and over if they're ingrained in our team's mind uh what gets measured gets managed so all of our team we've got currently three tvs at the new facility we'll have six and they just show all of our metrics and so um the important metrics to us are budgeted hours versus actual hours Um, and that is reported on an annual basis as well as, um, the last 30 days warranty time and unproductive time. So that could be driving, that could be time spent at the shop, anytime not clocked into a work ticket. So those are the numbers that, that matter a lot to us because 
those are the hours that are going to either improve gross margin or significantly reduce it. Um, and those conversations with our team happen very early on. We want our team to know what we're measuring. Um, everybody knows that, you know, I'm looking at something behind the scenes to make decisions. Um, so I, I just tell them flat out, here are the numbers that I am looking at. Um, here's what you can do to improve them. And I also give them the goal, right? Or our, our production managers give them the goal. And so it's not, uh, hey, work as fast as you can, because you're going to always take until the deadline. Like everybody calls it procrastination, yeah. but it's just simply like, we will take the maximum allowable time to get deliverable X done. And so if we tell our guys, hey, you have until the end of the day on Thursday to get this done. Okay. It'll get done on Thursday. Yeah, they'll pace themselves. It'll get done on Thursday. Yeah. I know it will. It just, that's the way it happens. And so we started just giving that information to our team. And also last year, was just simply putting these numbers up on a whiteboard. And we never even talked about it. We just put the numbers up on the whiteboard and we said, bigger numbers are good. And it was incredible that everybody's labor efficiency ratio went up because it started getting displayed in front of everybody with the crew leader's name right there on it. And so it, it's, it's that culture piece kind of builds itself. It takes effort every single day, but even as far as we put our net operating profit right on the board, put that right in front of everybody. Um, you know, it, it takes some education to explain to guys like, hey, that new truck is after this. That new truck is not before this. Um, so, you know, when we talk about cash flow and that sort of stuff, but our team is bought in on, you know, if, if we hit a certain dollar figure, we get profit sharing bonuses. If we don't, we don't get bonuses this year. Um, and I, I, I make it very clear to our team, like our, our bonus, for example, um, there's a book I'm looking at on my bookshelf right there. It's called Profit Works. Um, not profit first, but profit works. And it is about a simple bonus program. And so we want to reward our team the same way we're rewarded. So our team is working towards a profit goal. Um, and when they hit that goal, it's basically you have a hurdle and every dollar over that hurdle is returned at say 20% or 40% or, or what have you do what makes sense for your personal business. But um, that way our team is then rewarded the exact same way that selfishly that I am. Um, if we don't make profit, you know, I'm not going to win and I'm not going to get a return on, on my investment and you know be better off than putting it in the market. So um, our culture is very numbers driven, very metric driven. Um, and that way it's, it's clear and simple to our team. Now, it doesn't mean to say that I look at people strictly as numbers because I, I don't, I'm, you know, by nature, a very relationship driven person. Um, but I also want them to know what I'm measuring and what I'm looking at. Um, yeah. I think that's most fair. So pairing, I don't know if that part. answered. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I don't know if that answered any of your questions. I just usually, <laughs> you've noticed this already. I just get going on tangents. You're over there drinking coffee. You're Susan, good. And you're like, he'll be back. He'll be back. No, 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 no. You're good. Uh, the, it goes into what I was going to ask next, actually, which is, are y'all still paying hourly? Do you pay an hour? Like yep. how you structure your We pay? do. Yeah, we do. We've got a couple crew leaders that are on air quotes salary. So yeah. they're paid. Um, they're paid actually for 50 hours a week, just to make this easiest. We did 50 hours a week. So really it's 55 straight hours, air quotes, because you've got that time and a half overtime burden in there. Um, yeah. If they go over that, they do get they do get overtime. Uh, they are non-exempt employees legally. So you do have to pay them overtime. We just kind of pre-factor in that overtime. They're usually at like 42, 43 hours a week. Uh, there's two individuals that are on that. Um, everybody else is just hourly. Um, we, we've got our, a lot of our, actually, I think all of our support staff is on salary uh, just, you know, for, for ease, but um, all of our field staff is hourly. And uh, you know, that's the way that I like it because I want to see you guys get rewarded for, for working over 40 hours. Um, our, our typical week is that 42 to 43 range very rarely or sometimes in the spring you're you're over that but i don't want people that work or excuse me i don't want people here that i want people here that work to live and yeah. so if they think they need those 60 hour weeks so they can take home this big paycheck it's like hey let's just let's just teach you some more skills so you can work smarter not harder and take home that same paycheck but 
only working 45 hours. Like, I think that's a win. And, For sure. So, yeah. yeah. So the the hourly thing is, is cool because I, I wanted to hear how you were actually incentivizing people to still hit those numbers, still hit those goals. And so it sounds like you're using that um, profit sharing type of incentive, bonus, bonus incentive program. Yep. Yep. We don't do, so we don't do pay by performance. We don't, yeah. you know, I've, I've looked at that. Just not something that I want. Um, I don't know that you know, it's sustainable that, as you scale, like as you scale and you had, you had many, many employees. So, yeah, I mean, we'll have, we'll have give or take about 44, 45 in the field, I think yeah. um, around there, maybe it's a few less, but um, around that mid 40, low 40 number in the field. And I, I just think with all of the, you know, the, the go backs and things like that gets taken out. Yeah. There's just a lot of weird stuff there that, you know, I, I would rather just say, Hey guys, you know, we're going to pay you this. Um, if you, you know, increase in position level or significantly increase in responsibilities, and whatnot, you're going to need a raise. Um, if you're significantly outperforming it, you will get a raise in August. We do all of our raises in August. So um, that gives new hires from March, April, an opportunity to expand their skills and then in August, they get that raise. Um, but it also, you know, when somebody said, and we've had zero so far, knock on wood, but we don't have people say, well, company X offered me, you know, 50 cents more an hour. What? That's great. We do raises yeah. in August. Like, that's when we do our raises. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, it is, just it is what it. it is. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And then, it, it, yeah, it just makes it easy. It eliminates that conversation completely. Now, if somebody like I said gets you know a, a promotion to a crew leader, well, that, that's a different position, so mm-hmm. they obviously get the appropriate raise with it. So, yeah. yeah, that's good. That's good. I, I forget where I was going. I don't know. I had something else I was going to ask along those lines of the the profit and the the uh, incentive program, but I they think that's they cool. don't pay me back. They don't pay me back if we lose money. Thankfully, we've never done that. But uh, but I yeah. did have somebody ask that, and I said, no, 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 we don't profit share the other way as well. I promise. It's just uh, it's just. I know I was going to ask you. I know I was going to ask you. How do yeah. you? So how do you manage? keep up with so last year we had our our biggest issue was I, I spent way too much on labor but it was because we just weren't producing at the rate that we should have been producing like i knew what could have been done it wasn't done so like we were getting into overtime hours but we were not generating overtime hour revenue does that make sense so yep. how do you manage that getting those 42 43 hours like how do you stay on top of that and not let guys sure. go over yeah so that is simply the I care more about the job being done in the correct number of days rather than the correct number of hours. So if somebody goes over hours marginally, I can live with that. I can live with that. But if the job was Monday to Thursday, the job needs to be done at the end of the day, Thursday, because I don't want to go back, go pick up X, Y, and Z machine or equipment or, or anything like that. Like I, I also don't want to go back for two hours of work in the morning. That's less efficient than it would be just to have some overtime. The big thing that it boils down to is we only schedule for 40 hours a week. And so if they are doing 43, 45, you know, heck, if a crew did 50 hours worth of work in a week, I don't care, but we better be doing 50 hours worth of work. If you're, you know, kind of, as you said, if you're doing 50 hours of, of, of time and, and 50 hours of labor, but only getting 35 hours of work done that doesn't math and so yeah. that's that's where that's where we use budget versus actual and we put those measurables right in front of the other team members and then if you know if two are doing an exceptional job and you got one guy who's falling behind uh, chances are pretty good that problem's going to solve itself did you that guy as you gonna... as you grew through this did you get like how have you perfected your estimating so this that's what it comes down to is like if we, if I got a guy that's, if I got a crew that's going out, uh, a crew of three and they're going mm-hmm. out to mow and I say, oh, they can do 15 yards, but, but I'm wrong. Like, how do you, where do you find that switch? And you're like, Hey, I don't, they can't do that. It's not possible. You know what I mean? So yeah. First things first, nobody's ever going to be as efficient as you because yeah. they do not get paid like you. Same thing with me. Same thing that I've had to have this conversation with our production manager. Well, yeah. They make more money on it. Well, yes. uh, but he's like, well, I could get this done in X time. It's like, yeah. well, that's great. 
but you're not the one doing it. So yeah. don't compare this to you. That's that's not right. You got to compare this to them. And so one of the big things I will talk about is if you think something is wrong, then bring me the solution. That might mean, hey, Sam, you said X and you said we could um, do the coping around this pool and it should take us one day. And there's just no way. And they do it and they're like, oh, it actually took a day and a half. Okay, that's fine. Bring me a sheet of paper with a written production rate on it saying we used this type of coping. We used mortar or glue. We did this and it was this many feet and it took this many budgeted hours. Then I can implement that. I can put that back into our software to provide a better bid. But until you do that, I can't do that. I just, yeah. I can't. And so it, we have a, it's one of the things we're working on is oh, don't take the monkey. Um, don't bring me problems. Bring me solutions. Hey, I identified this problem and here's the solution I think we should try. If you don't bring me that, I'm just going to say, hey, I need a couple of solutions then so we can work through this. But I'm no longer the one generating all these ideas. Yeah. I just, I can't be. Um, and so it, it just, well, that's not, that's not where your expertise is anymore. Like that's not where your focus nope. is. Nope. It just, and it, and it can't be, um, you know, I think the people closest to the fire have the best probability of solving that. Yeah. I I'll make a decision cause I know I'll live with it cause I made it, but I don't want me to make all these decisions and then they all be wrong and it frustrate the team members who probably had better information to solve them anyway. Yeah. So help them or empower them to solve those problems with your help and guidance, obviously, because they might not know the why behind some certain things like, Hey, we just can't charge more for this. We just have to figure out how to be more efficient because the market won't bear it. Okay. Well, we need to, you know, we need to rent this piece of equipment. Let's do it. If that's what it takes to get us on budget, then let's do it. And so, um, you know, I, I, the measurable of budgeted hours versus actual hours to me is the most important bar none. Uh, labor is our number one expenditure every single year, every company across the board, that's going to be your largest line item on your PL. If that can be managed, that will have the largest impact on your bottom line. If, if we're not managing that and we're worried more about, you know, saving pennies, you're never going to save your way to a million bucks. So yeah. sell it right, do it right. That's that's kind of what it boils down to in my mind. Uh, we were in your shoes two years ago. Um, we didn't measure it like we should have. And yeah, it, it bit us. I mean, it, it hurt. Um, we weren't nearly as profitable as we should have been. And, uh, and we did this, you know, we had this great year of growth and it was like, oh crap, like we really don't have a whole lot to show for it. So yeah, yeah just focusing on that budget versus actual number is what we found to be a huge driver. Which, which all in turn just circles back to what gets measured, what gets managed. Like, that's yep. what it comes down to. Like, if you're not tracking time in the field, you're not keeping up with that stuff, then it's never going to fix itself. And I never. think that's something that we're having a real realization of is, like, we have to do a better job. Like, even with a, a small group of uh, guys working, like, they have to be tracking their time accurately. And you have to set the precedent and the standard that, I'm not responsible for your time tracking. If you submit your time and it's wrong, that is, that is on you. Like if you submit it and you forgot to clock in in the morning, then that's your fault. Like it's not on me to keep up with when you clock in or clock out. And so, um, is, is there, are y'all clocking in and out in, I'm, I'm assuming with 40 guys, like they're actually doing like clock sheets in the, in the warehouse. Uh, no. So are they, everything on, is app? Are they on app? Okay. Yeah. So they're all, yeah, we're all online. We're Yep, we're using Aspire. Um, everybody clocks in and out of Aspire. Um, you know, everybody loves to bag on software, and it's not perfect. None of them are. Yeah. You're going to find things that you don't like about Element. Nothing's 100%. Um, nothing's perfect. No, no, not at all. But uh, we actually made the threat. Um, thankfully, never had to do it once we made the threat. But we said, hey, if you're just blindly clocked in, you're not actually clocking into individual properties for snow removal, we're just going to pay you minimum wage because we don't know what you did. We don't know if you provided any value. Um mm -hmm. We're not doing anything illegal. We're paying you minimum wage, but we just, we, we need you to clock in. We just, yeah. it's important because we're billing all hourly. Um, this is all T and it was all drifting work and, and drifting is out of scope in our contracts. And so um, thankfully nobody had any issues then when you, yeah. when you made a little a threat and, you know, I don't know if we would have anyway, but 
how do you manage that though like like of the clock in clock out like in this early when y'all first started like getting really strict and adopting that like you have to clock in in the mornings when you get here not at 8 30 or 9 or whatever and you can't you can't clock out 20 minutes after you leave either like you can't forget and be like oh we'll clock out of the house yeah so with element same way with spire um it's all crew leader driven right Um, oh so you had crew leader driven at all Yep. So the crew leader has the iPad. He can clock everybody out, but when somebody gets there, they have to go to his iPad and punch in their four digit pin and it'll clock them in. Um, I believe it's the exact same way on LMN, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Crew leaders a lot. And so, yep. And so the crew leader, ultimately, if they're a crew leader, they should be responsible enough yeah. to do this. And if, if they can't, like, man, that's like base level task number one. Like, yeah. you got to be able to do that. And if you can't, like, Am I sure you're the right fit to be a crew leader? Like, yeah, hundred percent. Uh, I don't, I don't really think you are, and so um, you got to be able to to trust them to do that, uh, and and then you know simply we had no issues, and I I shouldn't say that we've had issues. You know, yeah. everybody does, and people make mistakes, and I can I can live with it. But if somebody's continually making the same mistake over and over and over, are they really the right fit to be the one? leading a crew if they can't do base task number one you yeah know, that's that's where i struggle to to see it so no i just i i i push you know the crew level responsibility push that push that responsibility back to your teams because otherwise you're just adding more to your backpack and eventually you know you're weighed down by the rucksack that you got and and so get that out of your bag and so you can kind of run with leading the business instead of doing some of these tasks a hundred percent man well well, this has been super good this has been a great people conversation talking about growing uh, people in your company Uh, we didn't even get to dive into as much as i wanted to today but i know that it's uh it's just a process man we could probably have six more of these and go even longer and, and not even touch the surface of it so uh maybe we'll get you back on here um once we get through yeah. spring rush and, and do a debrief or something i'll i'll start i'll start nagging you now maybe we'll get it scheduled by june so yeah uh, <laughs> that's that's just fine with me man that's I'm just, just fine. You we got some time. busy stuff over here too no it's all good and, and you know i always say you could be stressed because you're busy or you could be stressed because you have no work exactly i know which one i'd prefer um you know spring rush is is truly the one time you have to grow the business like that's right the the moves you make now are are what is going to have that that nice pretty top line number but also you know the price you sell it for now don't drop your pants just to get something sold because yeah. that's what's going to affect that bottom line numbers so it's the one time that you know we're excited to to watch all of our friends and the, the businesses grow and and uh and and do big things it's an exciting time of year that's what we're here for uh, i've been saying that spring is here it's right around the corner we're in alabama we we start mowing this week like it's i mean we are literally in spring so uh, it's wild that it's already here as winter flew by i'm sure y'all are probably glad winter's over y'all got hammered uh, i saw that storm what was funny is i don't know Corey literally did a podcast and was like two weeks three weeks before that storm he was like man we gotta have snow like all of our all of our seasonal prepays are getting mad because we hadn't had a bad winter. And then that happened. And I was like, well, Corey, you asked for it. So Dude, it was like two feet in, in eight days, nine days. And then it drifted on the back end. Like it's as bad as we've ever had. Um, we did a really good job at our crews were able to keep everything open. Not everything was perfect. I'm not going to try to tell you it was, but yeah. everything was open. You know, everything was cleared. Everything was pretty dry towards the end. It was just kind of drifting over, but I, I would be fine if we just go back to like these little two inch or three inch events. That, <laughs> yeah. Those are get pretty you, manageable. Get you another five years of those and then maybe have another big one by then. But I'm good with that. Uh, I love it, dude. Well, I don't want to hold you. Where can everybody find you if they want to follow up with you and uh, kind of just watch your, you're building a shot. We didn't even get to get into any of that. Uh, but where can they follow along with you at? Yeah. Um, at etch outdoor, E T C H outdoor. Um, you can follow my personal. I, I post, kind of unrelated business stuff a little bit about the building there that's different and i'm actually getting my pilot's license so i post a little bit about flying planes on oh, there yeah. um, that's sam underscore rankin r-a-n-k-i-n um yeah man I, I love to connect it's it's one of the best parts about this industry is everybody's pretty open you might not like my my answer but i'm happy to answer about any question i'm going to cut it straight and uh might hurt your feelings but i'll tell you like it is and yeah, man, I'd, I'd love to be back on here. I I, I think uh, you got a good thing going down there and good podcast. So I would, uh, I'd be honored to be back. 
Yeah, man, I would, I would very much appreciate it. We look forward to it. Hopefully, once you get a shot, but I would love to come out there. I want to come see Ballard's shop when he opens, so maybe do a two for one and come see y'all out there. So, come see mine first. That's please. right, <laughs> because you're gonna be like, "Wow, this is great!" And then you can go see his, and you'll forget about mine. Don't go the <laughs> other way. But no, Corey's a mentor of mine. He's a is a good guy to have in your corner, and and uh, yeah, not a lot of good things to say about him as well. So you're welcome yeah. out here anytime, anytime. Awesome, dude. Well, guys, thank you for tuning in. I hope you all enjoyed it. This has been an awesome conversation with Sam. We really appreciate his time and spending it with us this afternoon. I know that it brought some value to you helping uh, grow people's uh, grow people in your company and growing your company overall. So thanks for tuning into the episode today, guys. I super appreciate it. And we look forward to catching up with everybody here on the next one. Cool, dude. That was awesome. Good work. Good work. That was fun.